from the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resort in Orlando, Florida. It's the Cube, covering Splunk.com 2016. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and John Walls. Hey, welcome back everyone, live in Orlando. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the single noise. We are here for .conf 2016, part of Splunk's seventh annual event. I'm John Furrier, my co-host John Walls, and we are going to have a Shazam of a segment. You're a music guy, aren't you? I mean, you're, you're a big music guy. I love music. You've got Shazam on your phone? I've got Shazam on my phone, yep. All right, we're going to mess with this in a little bit. To help us do that is Chris Cameron, who's a senior infrastructure engineer at Shazam. Chris, thanks hey. for joining us. Good to see you. Good to be here. First time that I'm here. Long first time Cuber. We, yes. need to, we need to come up with a song for that we and then, and then look and see if somebody's written it already or done it already. So we were talking before we came on, we're going to have a Shazam app integrated to the Cube experience to bring that community together. Be pretty cool. Obviously the Cube has a great community and thanks for coming and joining us as a Cube alumni. Great to have you. It's a pleasure. So Shazam's got some cool tech. Obviously started as a real kind of like total geek project and music wasn't even on the agenda with identifying music was a unique algorithm, matches a certain frequencies, ties in the database, hello, it's a Google search for audio, whatever you want to call it, now expanded. A lot of infrastructure involved for us. Give us the overview of what's going on with Shazam, how big, how much data, what goes on under the, under the hood. So we have over 100 million monthly active users and we need cloud infrastructure and on-prem infrastructure to support that. So we have a mixture of Amazon, we have a mixture of a third-party managed data center, we have our own in-house data center, but we have, without giving too many numbers away, obviously hundreds of servers, we have some EC2, some DynamoDB, some Amazon Redshift, uh, we have about 30 Splunk indexes, so we're a... So a lot of cloud. A lot, cloud. Of cloud, a lot of cloud, some on-prem. Um, actually, because of our requirements to do the recognition infrastructure using GPUs, GPUs are a little bit hard to put in a cloud infrastructure because they generate a lot of heat, and also they're slightly slower because the, you share yeah, facility them. issues, it's a classic yeah. carve out for on-prem, have that on-prem. Yeah, on exactly. So, so our GPU recognition cluster actually makes up the size of the state in a managed data center. So a lot of infrastructure, basically web scale in the modern era, mobile users. I got Shazam here, you want to show a demo? You That's want to right. tease this up real quick? Or? So I'm here, I'm at the Cube, and um, you want to know who this guy that's speaking on screen is. He's a bit crazy, he's Australian, he has an accent. So let's just pretend we forgot who you are. Yeah, I'm somebody. So right. if you press the Shazam button right now. Press it. Magically, through the interweb and the magic that is Shazam, it will actually recognize That's you. who I am. Yeah, it's me. Let me see. It's, it's me in virtual form. And it's a, an app that I created for Shazam.com. Yeah. And it tells me where I'm speaking, what I'm doing, and it's a way for you to interact with me. If you want to uh, link in with me, there's a button to link in. But you can get a bio on there too. There's if we want to know who you are, what, you, you know, what you're talking about, where you are, what time yeah. of day, all exactly. those things. So this brings yeah. up a good point, obviously, um, the directory, music, people, yep. it's audio. Yes. Um, and obviously with Siri, uh, AI, audio cues are now huge. Yes. Right, so you're saying you guys can do this yes. for people and anything. Absolutely, anything. Uh, we do it for almost anything and everything. So our audio gets used at live events, gets used in stores, in retail outlets, so that we can help people and help brands engage with their users. We do visual as well. So you can take pictures of Coke cans and magazines and other merchandise. So I think even a Formula One car might even be Shazamable because uh, we have a relationship with I mean, barcode scanning's been around for a while. There's been all these devices, the QCAT going way back, yep. and you really know your web days history. Yep. But now with QR codes yep. and Snapchat, people are actually getting used to using the native device yes. for capture and then discovery. Exactly. And now voice, obviously Siri with the iPhone and uh, yep. other technologies. Uh, Cars are going to have it. Mm -hmm. um, so the interface of the voice is yep. there. What are you guys doing now to create more headroom? Obviously, what do you currently have in market yep. and what's in the pipeline? So we do audio recognition right now, we do visual recognition, and we've got Bluetooth recognition. So we can do hyperlocal, we can do anything. The Shazam ethos is to be able to recognize anything. 
and we're trying to do some, uh, without giving away too much of our pipeline, but the next visual implementation is going to be awesome. Everybody's going to love it. Is there anything because of the mobile environment? I mean, does that change at all? I mean, either how you harvest data or capture, whatever, because and it's, it's a unique animal. Yeah. Yeah, mobile poses its own challenge. You know, Wi-Fi drops in and out, and you know, we're saturated here at Splunk.com. Uh, sometimes I can't get a signal and sometimes I can't get a response as to what I've just shazammed. But mobile, it's a mature environment right now. It's not like you know, the 2007 years. Um, so it's really, in some ways, no different to a normal web app. But it, it's, it's our native uh, application format. So no difference for us. So what's the coolest thing that you've seen with Shazam? I'm obviously, my daughter uses it for music all the time. I see you whip out the Shazam, she puts it the radio, yep. it's playing on, on, gets the Shazam. Great for music, everyone gets that use case. I've seen it on TV. Well, yep. What other cool things can you share in having access to all the data? So, uh, cool things, cool use cases involve uh, being able to sing your friends a song via karaoke, uh, it involves some, we did some Oculus stuff with a, with a soft drink company. Um, we have some in-app experiences, like for one of the movies, you Shazam the movie poster and your phone becomes part of the set and every time you move around in three dimensions, like it feels as though you're in part of the set. And one time we're in the Jaguar car and it felt as though you're in the car and you press the button and the engine just goes boom and you felt as though you're in the car. It was a really good interactive experience. So this brings that augmented reality gesture-based discovery. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what to call it, but we'll just say a gesture, voice, picture. Yep. I'm initiating a progression that you guys are facilitating. Yes. I mean, in a way, that's an opportunity, right? It is an opportunity and I'd say watch this space for the uh, with a play on realities. Uh, hopefully that'll be coming and we'll be announcing that at some stage in the future. All right, so there's a big opportunity for you guys. I can see a lot of future, I can yeah. see the vision, no doubt. How do people work with you guys? Do you guys have an ecosystem? Is you guys doing it by yourself? How do people make money with Shazam? How do people get involved? Obviously you're here at Splunk, you Splunk some things for yeah. the demo. Can people play with Shazam? Do you guys have any open APIs? Any kind of developer environment? So we have partners that we that we work with, and we also have our own sales force. We um, we're a datafied business, so we're trying to sell data to other people as well. So you can, if you wanted to buy a Shazam-enabled advert or a Shazam-enabled experience, uh, you can speak to our salespeople. They're quite easy to find. Shazam.com/brands. Check it out. Uh, and we have in-country representatives in in various parts of the world. But uh, yeah, if also if you want access to our data, you can look on some sites. I think data at Shazam.com. You can buy some of that. I'm sure we'd be happy to talk with you. We have uh, relationships with media, uh, like the record labels, you know, individual artists, uh, radio stations, so there's plenty of ways to get access so to Shazam. So if someone's listening to a Q you can just Shazam it and find out who the hosts are. Yeah, I, I'd love to be able to do that for you. Uh, give me 15 minutes, I'll make a call. So, so it's all about, I mean, you, you know all about user behavior, you know about engagement, I mean, these, yep. but these are points that you're refining with the data that you're, you're gathering, you're aggregating out of, out of you know, your collections. Yeah. You know, what are you finding out, like in general, that you find actionable, that you're finding useful to fine tune your services? So, one of the things that, uh, that help, we, so we have um, a set of people inside Shazam who's able to help somebody if they buy Shazam and able to experience as to how and best you can get users to interact with Shazam and perhaps lead to purchases. So, whether that be choosing the coolest music, or you know, placement of call to action signs. Uh, we have some insights as to what people do in shopping centers and what they're likely to be interested in or buy. We have a whole lot of data that we can actually mine and help other companies monetize. Um, but the people who do that are, are the research people, uh, not me. And I, I forget some of the useful insights that they're doing. Let me ask a question. So here's just kind of thinking out loud. So yeah. We do in the queue. Yeah. We kind of connect the dots, we riff on stuff. So let's just say that I have a CUBE interview, we're doing this here, and it's on a, a video, so you're watching live, hello everybody. But it goes on demand for YouTube. Yeah. We do CUBE gems. We also have our podcast on Friday, 8 a.m. Pacific time, listen to my podcast live. Also, go to soundcloud.com, CUBECast, for the weekly podcast, the fourth week. So, I can see a use case where um, I would like to have, see if I can go to Shazam and say, anytime someone Shazams a CUBE video, yep. that they could pull up derivative data around it. Like, 
related videos which I have metadata on. I might have top stories that might be trending in the genre. See, we're talking about, you know, big data, at yes. Splunk, someone Shazam's this interview, and says, wow, cool interview, related to Shazam and Splunk with IT, I mean, I'm not making it up, but is that possible? Uh, I absolutely, do that? because we can pinpoint anywhere in the audio stream as to how far through the audio you are, like is two minutes and 21 seconds through the audio, and based on that, we can generate your custom result, and you're right. All those so I give you a metadata playlist or something, or a storyboard, or? We need uh, to work on the solution, but yeah, essentially. It's possible. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like, we're, we're kind of doing things like uh, Shazam for conferences, and I've been doing a bit of Shazam for Splunk Conf and Splunk Live London, where basically, throughout the day, the results change, and you can Shazam during the day, during the conference, during the talk, and you can get different results. So it's quite helpful. So what if I wanted to build it into a mobile app, because we're coming out with the Cube app soon, our yep. native mobile app, and it's going to be, you know, all playlists, but like top videos. Can I put a Shazam button in my app? Because I'm on my phone, right? Yes. I'm mobile with the consumption. Yeah. Analog makes sense, uh, radio uh, or TV. Is there a Shazam button I can natively put on my mobile app? Uh, without giving too much away, the answer is coming. yes, you should talk with us. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> no, that's Because you can't listen, you can't say, hey, yeah. I mean, you want to say, hey, Shazam this iPhone. Uh, yeah, Shazam uh, we, this interview. You, yeah, so Siri, Siri will work, you know, say, hey Siri, what's that song? But, I'm sorry, I probably just turned on all our phones by saying that. But well, if I hit the button to sit Siri, I turn off what I'm playing, or yeah, it exactly. in and the it's background, be and right. Safari browser Absolutely. sucks for that. Um, and you don't want to develop your own app to, and the own tech to do the audio recognition. You want to make use of Shazam. But you guys nailed the use case and the user expectation of Shazamming. Absolutely. Which is like typing in a keyword or Google, or Yes. You know, so that is a good brand value. Absolutely. So I would don't want to have to reinvent an image mark or any kind of brand now. I just yep. love to write on Shazam's coattails on that. So, and his audio. Uh, absolutely, so I'll give you a use. So you're, you're a clothing company and you've got cool music playing in your store and you want people to engage with your brand. You don't want to develop your own in-store app because I'm going to walk into the store and I don't want to download your little app, which I'm going to use once. So, what you sh and app real estate is a prime commodity. People have 100 apps on their phone, but they use 10. Yeah. And one of those 10 is usually Shazam. So don't invent your own. All right, so we're going to do a Shazam. Shazam button on our mobile app. This is a great deal. And like again, first of all, Shazam, like Splunk, yep. has a unique brand. It's a verb. Yes. So when you see verbs, as brands, Kleenex, Splunked it, yep. you know, Googled yes. it, Shazammed it. Yes. You guys are there, so you crossed over. Yes. Now where's the growth? How do you get to one billion well, users? Well, uh, good question, and we're always working on that. <laughs> You're the infrastructure guy. <laughs> is, is there like, you is can there... just say, hey, my job is to make sure that everything runs for a billion users. <laughs> That's, you know, you're good. Uh, but, well, but, I'm I'm really excited to work for Shazam, so you know, this is all very exciting to me. <laughs> is there a security play here though too? I mean, with recognition, identification, yeah. those kinds of things. So maybe there is an opportunity there to, for a whole different sector for you to play in? Yeah, the uh, sectors that we can play in is virtually limitless. It's just up to us to choose where we're going to go. But we do, like, we, we use Splunk and we uh, kind of use Splunk for security and we have security issues with our app as anybody does and we've got to care about that. We have celebrities on our app posting uh, you know, Twitter-like messages. It'd be bad if that got hacked. Um, but we can go anywhere with this app and uh, the future is, is our oyster. The world is our oyster. Uh, it looks like you're going to the queue. All right, so we will work on that. We'll, we'll continue. Great, congratulations. Um, I got to ask you the kind of the big question, kind of looking at the landscape. This is not really a Shazam question, but just in general. Yep. The trends in tech that you're most excited about, knowing what you're dealing with at Shazam. Yep. A lot of pressure to be a hyperscaler, web scaler yep. now. You got cloud, obviously a lot of Amazon, and we have a lot of Amazon as well. So you know, it's a lot of goodness in there, but scale is really, really important. Cloud gives you that. You got some on-prem. What do you worry about? What are you focused on or that you like? Is it more flat in-memory flash? Do you like Linux, kernel memory? What, what kind of stuff's going on there? Um, actually, the... what's kind of exciting to me and some of the stuff we're doing at Shazam is machine learning and 
and you know the making real data science use of the data. So I've uh, I've been playing with Splunk machine learning, and what's what's great about Splunk machine learning is it's democratizing big data and it's democratizing data science. So somebody like me, who's not a data scientist, can actually go and play. They solutionized it. If that's yeah, the word. I mean, they made a solution out of it. Simplified it. And you know, I can actually go and play with Shazam data, machine learn it, and I can predict the next number one song. And I've got a prototype of that happening right now. And it's awesome. And it's some, I don't need a PhD to be able to do this. Well, Chris, great to uh, see you in theCUBE. Love the, love the mojo, love Shazam, big fan. Um, you got Avery Wang, who I know, shout out to him. Great company, um, great success. You're a verb. When you're a verb, it's a good thing. Shazam it. Hopefully coming soon to uh, the Cube videos on our app. We're going to work a deal, get a media company discount for Speaking of deal. verbs, I've been cubed. You've been That's cubed. Right. Exactly. She's been cubed. Been cubed here. That's been splunking, it. we're shazamming, and we're cubing here <laughs> in Orlando. We'll be right back with more live coverage after this short break.